What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and today I wanted to review over this latest Reddit spoiler concerning new content coming to The Division 2 later this year. Now unlike that last supposed leak that hit Reddit a few weeks back and I posted a video breaking it all down for you, this spoiler is extremely detailed including the new content, new weapons and gear and even PvP changes. But before we begin today's video, in case you aren't yet a sub, please take just a moment to smash that sub button for intensive division content and don't forget to ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my YouTube channel. You can also really help out the channel by watching this entire video, rating and or sharing the video and of course leaving a comment. Alright, this reddit post is kind of lengthy so let's not waste any more time and dive right in. Okay, as I normally do with these breakdown videos, I will leave a link to this Reddit article both in the video description and the pinned comment in case you want to look it over for yourselves. Showing up on your screens right now is the Reddit post I've been referring to and I'm just going to start reading from it immediately and making commentary where need be. It's titled New DLC Manhunt, like the title. The hunters unite under one leader named Natalia Sokolov. It's supposed to be Sokolova, but let's keep going. So in other words, they're known as Russian death squads. There are four LTs, lieutenants, that work under Natalia and will need to be defeated in order to find the final location of Natalia Sokolov. Uh, the final location for Natalia Sokolova is in Delaware, USA. This is where the final boss fight will occur, but also where the new game mode will be introduced. Now, I personally don't see us getting a new location like Delaware. If anything, I was thinking more like Langley to tie in with the Langley reports that we saw at the end of the Fei Lao manhunt. But according to this spoiler post... It's going to be in Delaware. All right, let's continue on. The four lieutenants have raid-like mechanics, so this will not be another rerun of manhunts like we currently do. They will have wipe mechanics, puzzles, etc. The first lieutenant goes under the name of Vika. The second lieutenant is known as Liza Veta. The third lieutenant is known as Lyosha. The fourth lieutenant is known as Nikita. So... I guess all Russian names to tie in with Sokolova. The only information we have on Natalia is that she is a close combat operative. She uses the new exotic SMG Rosix, I guess you could say. <laughs> That's apparently what is named here in the article that uh, will also be obtained by defeating her and obtaining a quest called Natalia's Yashik. I guess. Uh, this quest has four stages to it and will require specific pieces of gear and weapons to create the blueprint. The drop rate of the gun is 1% from Natalia herself once the quest line is complete. So according to the spoiler, we've got four different hunter lieutenants, all with, I guess, uh, Russian names to them. Uh, we've got some sort of new SMG exotic tied to Natalia. Um, the quest, I guess, to get this weapon has four stages to it. Even this article even goes into very specifics about that the gun is a 1% drop rate from Natalia herself once the quest, quest line is complete. All right, so the article continues on. It says the, the Rosix, i sorry, I'm probably butchering the name, exotic SMG, which is an exotic equivalent of the P90. Uh, I thought we already had an exotic P90 in the game. It's better known as the Chatterbox, but I guess we're getting another one according to the spoiler. Last attribute, damage to targets out of cover. Oh, so this is like a, a great laundry list of things. So listen, listen to this, mods. 10% critical hit chance scope, 15% critical hit damage muzzle, default mag of 50 rounds. Okay, so it's like all the best things that you want on your SMG. Of course, you want damage to targets out of cover because it's multiplicative. It's also got a talent associated with it. Uh, Pozzolani, I guess. Critical hits apply a debuff, which increases your damage to affected targets by 2% per stack of debuff applied. Up to 30 stacks can be applied to one single target. Wow. So you can get, what is that, 60% uh, damage? to I guess 60% extra damage to targets along with the fact that you've got damage to targets out of cover on this weapon so if this weapon if this p90 actually goes with the standard base damage of other p90s and then you're ad, able to add on damage to targets out of cover it's got crit hit chance scope it's got crit hit damage muzzle mod and it's got up to 60% it looks like at 2% times 30 stacks 60% uh, I guess extra damage to targets 
This could be really insane. I really like the way this weapon sounds. Uh, if the affected target dies, the stacks will convert into 0.5% bonus armor per stack, which lasts 10 seconds and is refreshed per kill. Well, that weapon sounds really intense. I'd love to have one of those. Uh, I don't see that coming to the game, but yeah. Uh, uh, let's keep going. Once you've completed the main DLC quest line, you will receive a project called, I don't know how to say this, Bit Ochok. Nikom, I guess, which translates to be the hunter. All you have to do is go to the specified location in Delaware where you initially defeated Natalia and you will get a hunter like glitch on your screen. Already, I'm already liking the sound of this. You will have to shoot the five lights surrounding the area and a hunter will spawn. The hunter has a question mark on its head and once defeated, you will unlock a new skill. The skill is called Smoke Trap. The smoke track, smoke trap, excuse me, activates once a friendly agent steps onto it, and you might have guessed it hides your nameplate and creates a smoke in the area, which is non-lethal. So if it hides my nameplate, I guess this would be used specifically for PvP, maybe? Because I'm not really concerned about NPCs seeing my nameplate above my head. So sounds like a PvP skill uh, in this spoiler. All right, let's keep going. Once you've unlocked the skill, you will be invited to matchmake into the latest game mode, Be the Hunter. This mode consists of 12 players, 10 of which are automatically division agents, and two other agents become hunters. This is completely down to RNG. The hunters have to work on killing the division two agents, whereas the division two agents need to collect the samples and extract them. Similar to survival, but this time you get the opportunity to become a hunter. I love the way this sounds. Yes, please. Let's keep going. Pretty damn cool. All right. That's what it says in the article. Pretty damn cool. The hunters have six skills they can use. Players may choose any of the skills they want before the game starts. By default, hunters will have 5 million armor and 1 million health. Skill tier 3 for each skill and can upgrade their skills to higher skill tiers when they defeat an agent and fully full kill them. I guess. Uh, hunters can full kill an agent by downing them and then holding their melee bind to use their axe. I'm loving the way this all sounds. I don't believe a word of it, but <laughs> I love the way it sounds. Hunters also gain movement speed when they use the new smoke trap. So this should be something every agent selects when players become hunters. The hunters also by default have double the status advantage when using EMP skills. Wow, this is like a really awesome, hashed out, really fleshed out game mode. Like I said, I don't believe any of this is coming to the game, but it really sounds interesting. I would so be down for a game mode like this, especially if it was replayable. It sounds kind of like uh, Evolve, where everyone kind of match makes in. Somebody gets to be the beast and the other people are the hunters, and the beast is trying to kill the hunters, and, and the hunters and the trappers are trying to catch the beast. It sounds just like that, but... Here's our version of it in the division. So it's basically 10 versus two, but obviously the hunters, the two of them have, sounds like quite a bit more armor and health and skill tiers and et cetera, et cetera. And I like the fact that you get to use the iconic melee bind to use their ax to fully down and kill an agent. All this sounds too good to be true. Like I said, I don't believe a word of it. I don't think any of it's coming, but if this is truly on the drawing table over at Massive, if it's over at uh, UB Bucharest and they're like, man, what do we do? What are we thinking as far as this new game mode that we've said we've got a completely new game mode coming? This would work really well. Like this, I would absolutely play. So this article continues on. The Division 2 agents can use any loadout they want, but beware of using skills without any hazard, and hunters can EMP for long durations. The Division agents will have the armor they use on their build of choice, but you cannot change builds once selected. You're always in combat when in the game mode and cannot change any items, even piece by piece. So you're really set in. You've got to go and go and you know, exactly with what you want. The goal is to find the five samples, which are called Zelenoin Lechini, I can't say that, otherwise known as the Green Cure. While obtaining these, you will come across operatives that roam and the streets who will notify the hunters of your whereabouts. So they're like snitches walking around. This sounds great. So you can play stealthy or go full guns blazing. I love this. This is really well thought out. Whoever this person is that really came up with this, yes. I, all I gotta say is yes, I like this. Once you've extracted, which is when the helicopter arrives, you will have to load your samples into the helicopter, but the helicopter leaving doesn't mean you win. 
10 people can't fit on the helicopter, so you will have to either defeat the hunters or make it to one of the two exits. Once you exit, you will probably be defended by a hunter. I don't know why it says you will probably be defended by a hunter that you end up killing or not. Okay. You will finish the game mode, and each player is rewarded by XP and a BTH create. I think it's supposed to be crate. BTH crates will give players items and the BTH credits that can be used as credits to shop on the new weekly vendor. Uh, yes, I love all of this. Like I said, I don't think any of this is coming to the game, but like if, if this game mode is truly, if, if, if they're over there at, at Massive and UB Bucharest and everything's in really, really, really early development and they're kind of throwing ideas around, this is one that like if I was on the design team, I'd say, yo, we got to check this out because it sounds really cool. Um, I'd like to see, you know, like what locations it is, et cetera, et cetera. I'd, I'd be so down. I'm like raising my hand over here. If you need play testing, I am in, please let me play it and, you know, private demo or alpha or whatever. I will definitely give you some, uh, some feedback on this one. So this, uh, Reddit post continues on. Let's keep going. They've even got gear sets in here. This person is really detailed. This first new gear set is called haste and hardy. So two pieces, 25% skill haste. Damn. Three piece, 30% explosive damage. Wow, this person really loves explosives. Four piece, come and get some. Explosive damage will convert into bonus armor for you and your allies. You will gain up to 50% of your armor as bonus armor to your teammates if they're within 15 meters of the explosion cooldown of five seconds. Wow. Okay, so 30% explosive damage, 25% skill haze. These are like way more than our normal gear sets. So this is uh, this is very interesting. And we also have a new brand set. Uh, I'm going to probably butcher this name, but uh, Zashtiknik. I don't know how to say that. One piece, 15% explosive damage. Two piece, 5% damage to armor. Three piece, 5% damage to health. So it sounds like the, uh, the Walker Harrison Co. Uh, gear set, just with a different one piece on it, uh, whereas it's not... I guess 5% weapon damage. So that's an interesting one. And then this article keeps going. Now this is, this is really wild. I've already read through this, so I know what's coming. This has got PVP balance changes. And it says, you know, in like parentheses, if you're interested, Crusader firewall shield disabled in PVP. Okay, that's never going to happen due to players being able to do large amounts of damage behind a shield as well as having the ability to corner glitch with half shields. I mean, that is part of the game. This is where you scope in through your weapon while utilizing the shield, preventing players from shooting you from behind walls while you can shoot them. So once again, I don't see uh, ballistic shields completely being erased out of the PvP segment of this game. And it continues on, uh, Bulwark Shield increased damage modifier to shield to six okay regulus damage decreased by 20 percent liberty damage decreased by 10 percent lmg damage increased by 10 percent rifle damage increased by 20 percent well, that's very specific uh riot foam duration uh it's gonna be from two to one seconds okay we believe players should use high skill tier to be able to foam efficiently and it isn't fair to be able to foam someone with a total of two seconds without any additional skill tier okay uh, that's a very believable statement uh skill tier damage and duration scaling reduced by 30 percent well, this person, whoever came up with this uh, Reddit post, really likes to go in with really large percentages. We always wanted players to explore new methods of using skills, but it has come to our attention that skills are overused due to the fact that they can distribute large amounts of damage instantly and over time while disabling players from moving normally and firing their weapons. Okay. Med kits increased from uh, f a four to six. Okay. Uh, it, it says got a, like a weird way it's written i guess we're moving from four to six pvp is all about survivability and we want to increase the number of med kits players receive as the chances of finding med kits when rogue are slim i do agree with that uh, i don't know if raising <laughs> basically adding on another two med kits is the best idea for this but uh in uh, excuse me in sync weapon talent removed that's never going to happen either uh the weapon talent provided too much in short space of time and for that reason made other talents feel useless in pvp so i don't see shields going anywhere in pvp i don't see in sync going anywhere in pvp not going to happen nemesis damage reduced by 30 percent this is to prevent players from body shooting it's a shooting it should be body shotting at high armor and killing players in a single shot 
I mean, there is some validity to that statement. Okay, so there is some truth behind that. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to just one-tap people with a nemesis just because the weapon is so incredible, even though you're running around with armor uh, cores instead of uh, weapon damage cores. Uh, intimidate talent reduced from 35% to 30% amp damage. Okay, that's small. Hunter killer chest piece reduced from 40 to 35% amp damage. Once again, only 5%. Concussion talent duration of damage when not using a sniper increased from 1.5 to 3 seconds. And then right below that, this is the final thing in the article. It says, thank you for reading, and it's got a smiley face emoji. Okay, so there you go. The entire Reddit spoiler discussion. And at this point, you've probably made up your own minds as to if this is real or fake. And just for the record, in case you couldn't tell, I think the entire post is fake. But, and this is a really big but, I really like that idea of the new game mode, Be the Hunter. And if this was really done well with alternating locations and varied weather effects, it could really be something new, fresh, and most importantly, replayable for the game. Now, the other items in the article, which are all very detailed and very well thought out. I mean, my congratulations to whoever you know posted this. They're really well thought out, but they all seem fake to me. The natural progression in terms of storyline is to go after Sokolova, but an entirely new map location, etc. just seems a little bit too much of a leap in such a short time frame for the studios involved. Not saying they don't possess the absolute brain power and talent to pull it off. I'm just questioning how little time they are working with. Anyways, let's go ahead and end this one right here. And I really look forward to reading your feedback about any and all of the items mentioned in this video. As always, if you haven't yet smashed that sub button for intensive Division content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to never miss a future upload notification from my channel. If you could take the time to rate and or share the video, it would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch for weekly streams, join my newly formed community Discord server, and find me over on Twitter for all my latest posts concerning most things gaming related. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.